Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to our second and final of two debates uh, prior to the spring election primary. That'll be in six days, Wednesday, February 16th. Yesterday, if you were not with us, we were able to talk to uh, the three candidates that are going to be vying to move on to the spring general election on April 6th to represent District 3. They are Mike Cummings, Teresa Collins, and Angela Myers. Well, today there will be another race to represent District 7's Aldermanic District in the city of Manitowoc that basically covers north from Vibon to Hamilton, west from South 14th to South 23rd, and between South 16th and 26th Streets for just a few blocks north of Division, uh, basically just a little bit up the road from Lake Michigan. And the three candidates that are going to vie to become the top two vote-getters in next Tuesday's spring primary are here to debate on the issues to you, their constituents, on why you should vote for them Tuesday, February 16th. And we welcome you to our second and final of two C. Hayford News debates on 107.9 and 1240 WOMT and WOMTradio.com and on 97.1 and 980 AM and Cub Radio. Dot com. My name is Brian Norton. I'll be the moderator for our debate today. And our CHA for News debates are presented exclusively by Novak Service Center in Manitowoc. Just a few ground rules before we uh, start hearing from the candidates. First of all, we had a uh, coin flip to determine who would go first, and then we'll go in inverse order. Inverse order, I beg your pardon, last for closing statements. Aaron Bailey, he won the toss. He will give his opening statement first. He'll be followed by uh, Mr. Scott Pilot and then Mr. Tim Bolt. We will go in inverse order for closing statements with Mr. Tim Bolt going first, then Scott P Mr. Scott Pilot second, and Mr. Aaron Bailey will go third. Aaron Bailey is the incumbent of this seat, challenged by Mr. Scott Pilot and Mr. Tim Bolt. And again, the top two vote-getters, Tuesday, February 16th, advance to the April 6th general election. The winner there will get a two-year term to serve on the Manitowoc Common Council beginning on Tuesday, April the 20th. Again, we will not take any phone calls. Our WOMT Shoreline text line, however, is open. If you have any questions you would like to ask the candidates, please feel free. 920-6824-674, 920-6824-674 to text our WOMT Hometown Shoreline text line. With that and uh, the groundwork being laid, uh, let's begin today's debate. And as I mentioned before, determined via a coin flip, incumbent Aaron Bailey won the toss and he will give his opening statement. And uh, Mr. Bailey, you have 90 seconds. Go ahead, please. Uh, thank you uh, for having me here, and I appreciate the opportunity to speak uh, speak with our constituents in our district. Um, again, I'm Aaron Bailey, uh, Councilman of District Seren currently, and running for a re-election of that seat. Um, what I'm trying to do is bring more diversity, um, not change the foundation, but let people know that we can all coexist together, and everybody's ideas are important to us. And so what everybody's doing right now is they're, they're jockeying for position, but what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to bring everybody together on one platform, regardless of what district, but this is important for this district and our district to make sure that we all have a chance to have equal representation, to have uh, uh, leadership, not just, you know, voices, but we need action. So that's what I'm here to do, and I want everybody to make sure they understand that that is my point and my purpose. Thank you, Thank you uh, Mr. Bailey and uh, Mr. Pilot. You have 90 seconds. You are next. Go ahead, please. Hi, I'm Scott Pilot. I uh, moved here to Manitowoc about 30 years ago with my uh, wife, Jennifer uh, Pilot. Uh, Jagman is her maiden name. We raised two children, Courtney Pilot, now Hanson. She's uh, alderman in District 10 right now. And my son, Ty, he's a high school teacher and a wrestling coach in Green Bay. Uh, school district. My wife, by the way, is a teacher in Gillette School District. Um, I graduated uh, college uh, 2000 here at Silver Lake College, which is now defunct, in a Bachelor of Science, Broadfield Social Science is my degree. Um, for the past six years, I have uh, serviced convenience stores in Northeast Wisconsin and UP, and I also run a private wrestling club. Used to be here in Manitowoc, but now it's in the pier. I have about 100 some kids. 
and I have a facility about 9,000 square feet. Um, the main reason I am running is I believe the constituents of District 7 deserve a stronger representation and leadership. Um, if elected, I will uh, be there to take calls. I will attend all committee meetings and all meetings. Um, and I have a, a little bit of vision for the, the city, one being I'd like to see the downtown continue in its growth and see the river and the uh, lake resources bloom. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Mr. Pilot And uh, Mr. Tim Bolt, you have 90 seconds uh, to make your opening statement. Okay, thank you for having me. I was a Manitowoc native. I've been born and raised in Manitowoc, a 1985 graduate from Lincoln High School and a 2010 graduate from LTC. I went away for a while because I served in the United States Air Force for 20 years in the security forces. For you that don't know, that's a cop. I did four stateside tours, three in Europe, two in the Middle East, and one in Central America. In 2006, I moved back to District 7 with my wife and two kids. I sat around and coached NYBA baseball for about three years and the Manitowoc Chiefs for the past seven. Currently employed at Manitowoc Tool and Machine for the past 10 years. After moving back and with my Air Force career, I couldn't think of a better place but the District 7 where I grew up on to settle down for my family. I went ahead and would like to improve the city streets, provide a safe community for our families, preserve our hometown values, and maintain law and order. Thank you, uh, Mr. Bolt. And um, I'm going to ask a couple of questions here uh, to get things uh, going, gentlemen. And what we're going to do is uh, we're just going to go right down the line. Uh, Mr. Bailey gave his opening statement first, so we'll start with Mr. Pilot here with his response. And I, I just simply want to ask you, you, you guys gave all eloquent opening statements, uh, very well spoken, but I guess what I want to get down to is uh, this, what, what, what burns in your belly or in your heart to say, I wanted to run to represent the constituents in District 7? What, what burns you? What drives you to run for this office? Uh, Mr. Pilot, if you could go first, please. Well, being a uh, history person and, you know, my background is Broadfield Social Science, I've always uh, had interest in government, um, but as I mentioned before, wrestling has kind of been my uh, uh, thing for the last 30 some years, but uh, I think it came time that uh, I needed to put my hat in the ring here and uh, hopefully uh, keep improving this the city to what I think it, could be the jewel of uh, Lake Michigan. Thank you, uh, Mr. Pilot and uh, Mr. Bolt. You are next. Go ahead, please. Yes, Bernie came from moving back here ten years ago and seeing how much the city has changed since I left. And I've always been a person and not want to sit back and just watch from the sidelines. And I think that it is my time now to help out the District Seven and to provide the type of leadership that. I was given when I joined the Air Force and take that and provide it to our city streets. Thank you, uh, Mr. Bolt and Mr. Bailey. Uh, you are next. Go ahead, please. Yeah, thank you. And I think uh, both of you gentlemen's answers were great, very passionate. Um, but what drives me uh, and, and really uh, gets at me to represent my district and continue to represent my district is the lack of representation that we have currently. That district set open for a while. And nobody was sitting there saying, hey, I want to do anything. So I, it was a person like me that's been actively working in the community that said, you know what, this is an opportunity to make a more more of an impact. You know, so, you know, I'm, I'm more of an uh, active instead of reactive person. So what I'm doing is I'm trying to set the foundation to build more in the community, not just wait for opportunity to open up. Thank you, uh, Mr. Bailey. And um, one more question here, and uh, Mr. Bolt, we'll start with you this time. Have you, during uh, the pandemic, uh, had an opportunity um, to knock on doors, talk face-to-face -face with constituents in your district? And if so, what is the number one pressing issue or concern that they have spoken to you about? Um, Mr. Bolt, would you go ahead first, please? Yes, I have. I've been contacted in my travels through the streets of District 7 by a couple of individuals who stated that the city streets is their number one focus in Manitowoc and then some of them would like to see a little bit higher uh, police coverage or occurrence or around them 
for the wide events we have but that way they can sit there and not take away from the other areas like normal routine patrols thank you uh mr bolt and mr bailey uh your next go ahead please all right um during the pandemic it was hard and you know i wasn't working so i, I took my time my free time and i volunteered as much as i can because i couldn't just sit around i'm a single father so i just couldn't sit around and just wait for people to uh get help so i was delivering food to people and that was one of the biggest things if i can talk with them it was about hunger needing uh help with their kids so i would go online to see if we can find uh teachers that are retired if they can help uh, parents out with schoolwork. so during the pandemic it was all about action again not reaction it was action thank you uh, mr bailey and uh, mr pilot please uh well unfortunately a majority of the uh people that i knocked on their door we're very glad that I was running, um, partly because they were not happy with Mr. Bailey um, as an, the current incumbent. Um, the other issue was one person was not happy with the uh, downtown, the continued downtown stress, or I should say that, how Mr. Nichols has stressed the, the development of downtown. He didn't like that, which I was kind of surprised. Okay, uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Pilot. I, I guess kind of piggybacking a little bit on the uh, on the downtown issue, gentlemen. Why, why don't they just follow up with uh, a question and a thought uh, that I just in listening to Mr. Pilot. I'd like to ask each uh, one of you this question. We'll start with Mr. Bailey this time. Uh, there has been an, uh, an emphasis on uh, revitalization of the downtown. I mean, we get a look at the CN Peninsula development. Uh, we get a look at. Um, you know, some a little bit of revamp parking. There have been some concerns from some citizens about getting more parking space, but that the downtown has really been a focus. Uh, uh, you see the shooting degree uh, development building uh, project going on and, and so many other things. I guess uh, the question I'll begin uh, with Mr. Bailey with is this. Um, are you satisfied with the progress of uh, downtown revitalization and development? And two, how important do you feel that the downtown get the focus and the attention of uh, not only you but everybody on the council to make sure that people when they come here or if they live here uh, feel good about their experience ah, that's a great question very complex but here we go i feel like you know the the importance that people understand um when going to downtown and dealing with parking and other issues it's that's that's a small piece of the uh the puzzle or the issue that you have to deal with you want to look at the development and how that development will bring more traffic and that traffic will bring more dollars and once we start doing that now we're starting to put pieces together to make it a whole so yes there are going to be little setbacks and little things that you know that might not seem right at first, but it's very important that we continue to add on and develop our downtown because right now that is going to be the cash crop, one of the cash crops of our community. You know what I mean? And the other part is, you know, making sure these roads going there are paved nicely as well. So, thank you, uh, Mr. Bailey, uh, Mr. Pilot, please. Well, as I mentioned before, I, th I think that downtown is is a key. I've traveled all around the country with wrestling tournaments and you know stayed downtown Fort Worth, Texas, and Atlanta, Georgia, and, you know, and even in small communities, and it always seems that the focus is the downtown, and I think, uh, you know, Manitowoc's in the right direction. I actually reviewed the uh, downtown master plan, which is about 87 pages online, and uh, a lot of the issues and things that they have said in this plan are all, all things that I would I think are awesome, like the River Point District. Um, you know, I know Mr. Bailey talks about parking. You know, there is a parking study out there, and I saw that, I read last night that uh, about 4,500 spots in the downtown area, and at the current rate, it's, it's about, you know, I know a lot of people are talking about parking issues. Right now, depending on where you're at, it's, the parking is adequate, but I think if we do have all the development, yeah, that the parking is gonna be, need to be addressed. Um, and I know that they're even the, the council has uh, implemented a housing study as well. So, thank you, uh, Mr. Pilot and uh, Mr. Bolt, please. Yes, yeah, so I didn't have a chance to look at the study that Scott saw. However, us being the cornerstone of the area, the downtown to Manitowoc County is a is an important item. You can't take that away. However, 
being the catalyst and the starting point for everything with the car ferry and the main source of bringing people in, they have to have a means to travel. They need to be able to get out and move and experience not just Manitowoc, but our entire county. So with that being said, I believe that, yes, we have to focus on the downtown district, but we also have to pay it a better focus on our streets to get us through our infrastructure on and about this great county of Manitowoc. Thank you, uh, Mr. Bolt. Uh, I, I was going to go to break, but I want to pick. I, I got one more follow-up to this, and we're going to start with Mr. Pilot on this. Um, it was asked yesterday. I'll ask you three now. Are you in favor of two-way street downtown, or keeping it just simply a one-way? And if you're in favor, would you feel that that would alleviate uh, some of the traffic congestion, some of the problems in that area? Uh, Mr. Pilot, please go first. Uh, that's kind of funny. Uh, I remember when I moved here. You know, in the early 90s, I remember listening to the radio, and they were, they were talking about the worst cities to drive in. And, you know, obviously this is 30 years ago, and San Francisco was number one, and then Manitowoc was in that top ten. And the reason was, was the one-way streets. And I know that I can't come from central Wisconsin, and I'm not from Stevens Point, but they have one-way streets too. So and I don't know if it's – I can see the, the uh, benefits, um, but I don't – I don't see why it really needs to be done at this time. Thank you, uh, Mr. Pilot. Mr. Bolt? And looking at the one-way streets in Manitowoc, I see that there's a lot of problems with continually having a bunch of them because of the fact that people aren't familiar with them. Yes, it will be new to us. However, when you're coming and we want to build a downtown district now you're having a lot of people come to Manitowoc and I foresee a traffic called crashes or other type of uh, mishaps involving especially with today very very icy roads you try stopping who knows at least if you have two ways streets going you have traffic going in both directions it's not a const or question mark on which way you're supposed to go. I could take Division Street. How many times I see people going up and down that one the wrong way. Thank you, uh, Mr. Bolt, and Mr. Bailey, please. Yeah, that is that is a great question because uh, I get most of my information and I learn a lot about my community from talking with people in my community. So one of the interesting facts I learned was that uh, one-way street on both sides, you know, of the bridge was actually for exiting uh, for like a case of a nuclear I want to make sure I'm saying this correct according to right a case of a nuclear evacuation um, they they had it so traffic you know wouldn't get held up both ways so I mean I think we're far away from that at this point so I would I would say that it would be more of a convenience if we did because there's so many incidents where um, there are cars going the wrong way there are tourists and when we try to develop the downtown we're talking about bringing in new tourists you know what I mean and, and that we need to make sure that we're paying attention to what they're aware of and what their attention is so I would I would not mind making them each street both ways you know what I mean because when it's icing you have cars parked already to the curve and you have uh, a, a elderly lady an elderly gentleman trying to you know merge across the street it's hard for them. Uh, sometimes when you just exit and out one of those shops, it can be a little hard. So I am for switching those up and, you know, making something interesting with the new development. Thank you, uh, Mr. Bailey. Uh, for those of you who are just tuning in, uh, you are listening to a uh, Seahafer News uh, debate that is presented by Novak Service Center in Manitowoc. I'm moderator Brian Norton with uh, the three gentlemen who are here uh, looking for your vote on February 16th to advance uh, to the spring general election. To do that, they've got to uh, finish 1-2, and whoever finishes third will be eliminated. We are joined today by uh, current 7th uh, Aldermatic District uh, Representative Incumbent Aaron Bailey and challenger Scott Pilot and Timothy Bolt. You are listening to the CA for News Debates, presented by Novak Service Center in Manitowoc. Novak Service Center. Trust us. At Novak Service Center, we're more than your local mechanic. We're a family-owned business, and we understand the importance of shopping local, supporting those in need, and
and showing our appreciation. That's why we're offering $10,000 in free oil changes to healthcare workers in our community. In addition, we're also going to offer $5,000 for free oil changes to those in the hospitality industry. So whether you're an essential healthcare worker or a server, a dishwasher, or even a cook, we want to support you. Simply stop at Novak Service Center and pick up your free oil chain certificate. No questions asked. It's our way of saying thank you. Novak Service Center, Manitowoc. And welcome back to our uh, Seahafer News debate as uh, the three gentlemen uh, vying to represent uh, District 7 on the Manitowoc City Council joining us here today. Uh, we have uh, current 7th Aldermatic District uh, Representative Incumbent uh, Aaron Bailey and challengers um, uh, Scott Pilot and Tim Bolt uh, here today. And the top two vote getters next Tuesday in the primary will advance to the spring general election on Tuesday, April 6th, and the winner there will get to serve a two-year term to represent District 7 in the city of Manitowoc on the Manitowoc Common Council. I am moderator Brian Norton. Thank you for listening, whether it's on WOMT or WOMTradio.com or on uh, WCUB or CubRadio.com. Glad to have you be a part of it, and we want you to be a part of it. Our WOMT Shoreline text line is open. 920-682-4674 if you have any questions. I see we have some coming in now. But a reminder, unfortunately, we cannot take phone calls. We just want to keep this uh, flowing the best to our ability. So again, uh, sorry about that, but we will take questions on our WOMT uh, Shoreline text line. Speaking of which, uh, gentlemen, we have one in. And Mr. Bailey, we are going to start with you. Good public health requires good government regulation. Wisconsin ranks very high in adults vaccinated against COVID-19. Do you believe that all should be required to wear face coverings according to our state requirement? Uh, Mr. Bailey. Well, safety and health is very important, as the study shows. And I know there's a lot of controversy on that, but I, I look at it on the side of this. I'd rather be responsible for saving a life versus taking one. I don't like the question, what if, or what if. If you have to ask that question, then it's better safe than sorry. I know we all heard that before. All right, so I do support that. I do, you know, I know people are going to be upset with that, but I do highly support that, and I will continue to support that. I'd rather be safe than sorry. All right, I'm not a scientist. I don't know all the facts, but what I do know, there's a high number of people dying. There's, there's kids that can't go to school. There's parents that can't uh, feed their families because of this pandemic. So I'm not, I'm not going to, Put my, uh, I'm not going to put my uh, answer on the shoulders of I think so. No, I know so. This is this is for the best. Thank you, uh, Mr. Bailey and uh, Mr. Pilot. You are next. Go ahead, please. Well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to disagree with Mr. Bailey. I am definitely not a uh, proponent of masks. Um, in our uh, wrestling facility, we don't wear masks, and one of the biggest reasons um, I feel that uh, it was imp it's important not to have it is the, immun the immunity um you know with wrestling we are uh you know sus susceptible to ringworm impetigo and all these other things and i think wrestlers have a very strong immune system i think it's one reason um why the mask should not be worn is people need to build up their immune system and uh in the latest thing lately that that now the cdc is talking about wearing two masks so my only question is uh, was the one, one mask even effective so, but I don't, I, like I said, I personally do not like wearing a mask, and I don't think we should be wearing a mask. Thank you, uh, Mr. Pilot and uh, Mr. Bolt. Go ahead, please. I guess, according to my gentleman to my right over here, I'm kind of in the middle with this one, <laughs> because uh, I do believe that the masks can work. However, I also do believe in freedom of choice. So, therefore, that if a person or establishment in their ownership wants to require me to wear a mask, I will wear that mask in that establishment. If I do not want to wear a mask, I'm not going in that establishment. However, the fact that I personally don't like wearing it because of different allergies and stuff like that. But if that's the way that it has to be to go into a certain place of work, I would have to follow that by just following the rules of that person, that owner who wants that in his establishment. 
Thank you, uh, Mr. Bolt. Uh, Mr. Pilaw, we're going to start with uh, this question. Uh, actually, we have somebody online uh, listening to this all the way from Atlanta, Georgia, if you can believe that. Uh, but here's the question from Atlanta, GA. Uh, what were you doing to improve the community before seeking office? And uh, we talked about this, I know, a little bit earlier, but maybe they weren't listening. But uh, why do you want to sit in that seat in District 7? So uh, from Atlanta, Georgia, uh, Mr. Pilot, go ahead and answer, please. <laughs> Number one, well, we'll go to that second part. The seat, like I said, I, I, I just want uh, our district to have better representation, and uh, I feel that, uh, you know, I have a uh, good enough isn't good enough. Um, so I want to, you know, fill that seat and, and keep pushing our, our city and, you know, our development and bringing new jobs in, bringing younger people in. Um, and I'm sorry, what was the first part of the question? They, they just wanted to know, uh, you know, what organizations, okay. what you were doing to promote uh, the community and so on before and why you decided to run for the seat as a result of that. Well, if things I've done before the community, um, I'll be honest, I haven't done a whole, hardly a whole lot other than be part of, you know, wrestling clubs um, wherever I've lived and or wherever I've coached. Um, wrestling has taken up... Uh, pretty much all my time for the last uh, 15, 20 years um, as a coach and a father of a, of a wrestler too. So I got to say, I, I do get involved with uh, um, Miss America pageant, uh, Harbor Cities, Miss Green Bay, Miss Wisconsin. So, but other than that, it, it's wrestling and the pageants. It. Thank you, uh, Mr. Pila. Mr. Bolt, please. Yes, for the last. Say 15 years since I moved back to Manitowoc, I've been very heavily into coaching youth sports, mentoring young kids that need a little bit of guidance in today's, I'll say, overspoiled world, get them a little more disciplined. And with the 20 years of the Air Force and leadership, I think that that put me in a prime candidate to provide some leadership for those kids. Uh, that would make me the candidate that, with the worldly experience, that I think can bring a different aspect to the alderman position. Thank you, Mr. Bolt. Uh, Mr. Bailey, go ahead, please. Oh, thank you. That is a great question from Atlanta, Georgia. Let me tell you right there. Um, what I've been doing is what I'm continuing to be doing, whether I'm sitting in the seat or not, uh, before I came here. And gentlemen, let me tell you, as coaches, I, I appreciate you guys because growing up, coaches were some of the foundations of my development. Um, not having a father figure uh, all the time. Coaches are very important, so I thank you for that uh, and your service as well. Um, but working with the community is very important. I've been doing that, working with food organizations, working with education organizations, working with um, my first job out here, I volunteered. I volunteered for over a year, and then they ended up hiring me because I was doing better than the people they had on payroll. Okay, um, I've been involved in all types of things with housing development. Um, that's, there's so many I should have made a list. It's going to look like a tax receipt. You know what I mean? But the, the important thing is that you stay active. Like I said, I am active, not reactive. So I always look in, I always look in any situation, whether I'm on a job or in the community, ways that I can improve my surroundings and improve the people around me. Thank you, uh, Mr. Bailey. Uh, back to our WONT Shoreline text line. Your plans, ideas, and timing for development of the former Mid-Cities Mall and Lakeview Mall properties. Your thoughts, what should happen, what shouldn't happen. Uh, Mr. Bolt, we're going to begin with you this time. The Lakeview property, that's a, that's a very good question because that was sitting as an eyesore for so long. One of several things has to happen. I would like to see that happen within the next, just say, five years. A, we have to do something that would bring more uh, people around to the Manitowoc area. It could be a park, meaning a roller skating park or a skateboarding park. It could be, get, if we can't afford that, bring a developer in and let's see what we can do with bringing some sort of, I'll call it entertainment or extra outdoor activity. Thank you, uh, Mr. Bolt. Uh, Mr. Bailey, go ahead, please. <laughs> These questions are just getting better and better, I tell you. Um, I would definitely advocate for, and I, and I strongly say this, I would definitely advocate for uh, affordable housing. That one thing, all right. Uh, another thing is, how about a boys and girls club? We need, we need something for uh, children to do out here, the youth. Um, uh, another 
key point, I mean, just besides housing and, and Boys and Girls Club, there's a pandemic, I shouldn't even say a pandemic, there's an epidemic with uh, depression and drug uses out here. So we need to get something that can actually help out with that and, uh, you know, flatten the curve on that. There are so many things. The entertainment is very important, but we are missing the point of how we're going to develop our community uh, to be better. We have enough. We have a lot of entertainment. We're going to continue to get more. But what we need to start tackling is the things that are going to develop our people in the community. Thank you, uh, Mr. Bailey. Uh, Mr. Pilot, please. Uh, that's a good question. I've never really actually thought about what uh, that, that space um, there. Um, but I do know that, you know, having, you know, work, working with kids and fa young families, you know, they love going to uh, water parks. Um, I know that Green Bay has Tundra Lodge. Sheboygan has Blue Harbor. You know, at, that site there is probably big enough to house a, uh, a water park in here in the Mantuac area. I guess that would probably be something I would like to see. It would bring a lot of dollars in. Thank you, uh, Mr. Pilot. And uh, we've come to the halfway point of today's Seahafer News Debate here on uh, 1079 WOMT and 971 WCUB and WOMTradio.com and CubRadio.com. You are listening to a Seahafer News Debate pre presented by Novak Service Center in Manitowoc as we hear for the, from the three candidates are looking for your vote in District 7. And again, basically that is a line that runs from v to Hamilton, then west from South 14th over to South 23rd, and between South 16th and 26th for the few blocks just a little bit north of Division Street with uh, Lake Michigan just down yonder. So, if you have any questions that you would like to ask these gentlemen, our WOMT Shoreline text line is open. 920-682-4674. We have some more we'll get to here in just a moment. And we'll be back in just a few seconds as the Seahafer News debates on 1079 WOMT and 971 WCUB are presented by Novak Service Center, Manitowoc. Winter weather keeps you indoors, but don't let the snow and slush get in the way of your routine vehicle maintenance. Hi, this is Jeremiah Novak. Our experts are ready to take care of your automotive upkeep, including servicing your brakes, replacing your battery, and changing your oil. At Novak Service Center, we'll even pick up your car and drop it back off, so you never have to go out in the cold again. So next time you're in need of a mechanic, trust us at Novak. Novak Service Center. Trust and welcome back to this special presentation of uh, the Seahafer News Debates on 1079 WOMT and 971 WCUB and WOMTradio.com and CubRadio.com. I am moderator Brian Norton, and uh, we thank you for tuning in as we uh, hear from the candidates vying for your vote in District 7. As uh, joining us today are Mr. Aaron Bailey, uh, who is the incumbent, and also uh, Mr. Scott Pilot and Mr. Tim Bolt. Again, if you have any questions you would like to ask of the candidates, our WOMT Shoreline text line is open for you at 920-682-4674 and no phone calls, please. Uh, gentlemen, back to the WOMT Shoreline text line and I believe we are going to start with Mr. Pilot on this one. What are you doing to engage in the minority population? Please give examples, if any, how you are leading or would like to lead in that area. And uh, Mr. Pilot, we begin with you. I, I can honestly say I probably haven't really done anything in the community with minorities, but I can say that I, with, with my jobs, with wrestling, and with uh, my, my CSER service, I deal with a lot of minorities. And uh, I mean, I, I understand, you know, the issues. But I can honestly say I haven't done anything in the community with the, with uh, minorities. Thank you, uh, Mr. Pilot and Mr. Bolt. Go ahead, please. With moving back to the area and coaching myself, I have not, other than coaching, spent a lot of time on, per se, the issues. However, I do see a need, and by traveling with Manitowoc, that some of the housing and stuff like that can be in increased or upgraded from what we have. I know there is a, a wider great, uh, need for ethnic background that uh, diversity has come to Manitowoc much more than what I did when I left before I moved back. So I'm becoming more accustomed myself to learning and what their needs and necessities are. Moving forward, I would 
engage fully and try to get some sort of uh, small town open house talk to find out exactly what do they need and do my best to try to help each and every one of them. Thank you, uh, Mr. Bolt. Uh, Mr. Bailey. Hey, another great question, and I want to say about that small town talk, that is a great idea. I'm actually already working with uh, and talks with, I should say, with the superintendent uh, for engaging more uh, parents of color uh, to get them uh, more engaged in their kids' education as far as advocating when they have issues, um, social issues about um, harassment or any issues like that, that is handled in a proper manner and that they have equal representation. So I have been doing a lot of work in the community with minorities and uh, outside of minorities because, at, like I said before in my opening, it's about putting everybody together on one platform. So if, if anybody hasn't had the chance to engage with any minorities as this community has grown with mixed kids, I feel like that's a waste of your time. That's a waste of our time. We need to be more engaged, not to waiting for opportunity, but taking every chance we get to engage. Thank you, uh, Mr. Bailey. And uh, we're going to head back to our WOMT Shoreline text line and begin with Mr. Bolt. Any plans for updating Pulaski Park? That's right down the road for me. Yes, I would love to see anything happen to Pulaski Park. We could sit there and add more apparatus. I don't care what. It could be anything to help the kids. Repave the basketball court area that's there. Have a private walking area for people to walk their dogs. There is a, a plethora of opportunities there. If we just sit down, take a survey on what people want, get out there, knock doors on doors to find out, whatever it takes. But there is a lot of different things that could happen with that park. Thank you, uh, Mr. Bolt. Mr. Bailey. Yes, and that's another thing, too. And I had a chance, you know, hanging out with the park. I'm not the best athlete when it comes to basketball. I can admit that. I'm height challenged. But what I do have is a conversation um, or a knack for conversation with uh, people when I know they need help with something. And one of the things I noticed hanging out at Pulaski Park is sometimes there's a there has been an influx. And I talk to neighbors around there with potential, uh, you know, youth, young youth um, violence. And so that was a big concern for them, and they want the park to stay nice. So what we need to do is not only organize um, something where we, we're having accountability and we're mentoring youth in those parks, but we actually start having community cookouts. That's one of the things I have in my plans for my district is start doing community district things together so we can have things in a park and say, hey, this is, this is this kid, this is this kid, and this is this person, so we're more familiarized with our neighbors instead of just seeing them once in a while and saying, oh, I think I know that guy, but you actually know that guy. Thank you, uh, Mr. Bailey. Mr. Pilot, please. Well, I know I walk by uh, Pulaski Park just about every day that me and my wife go walking. Um, and we, as we walk around, and we end up actually going by Mr. Bolt's house all the time, too. I can honestly say I've never actually stepped foot onto that, you know, on the other side of the street and went, on, went into the park at all. Um, I do know, you know, with the walks, different times of the day, you know, during the school year, you know, obviously I see the kids walk through there a lot. Um, you know, and Mr. Bailey probably can uh, probably speak to some of the issues that happen with with our youth there more than I can. Um, but I guess from you know being a, having been a coach for a long time and uh, especially with wrestling, I, I think you know keep, keeping kids busy um, is one way to keep them out of trouble. Um, you know I know basketball is a common thing in a park. You know maybe some other. Uh, games being set up or things that occupy their time would be a benefit. Thank you, uh, Mr. Pilot. And now back to our WOMT Shoreline text line. And uh, we're going to begin with uh, you, Mr. Bailey, uh, this time. Question is, with regards to the local economy, would you be in favor of more city government control over business decisions or less, and why? Okay, um, if the local city government were uh, going to allocate some of those funds that they're sitting on into our local businesses, sure. But if they're not going to do anything but try to dictate how businesses are ran and not put anything into those businesses, then no, I'm not for it. Um, we as a community, we can... we. 
Manitowoc has a great foundation of supporting local businesses and supporting each other. This pandemic has been kicking everybody's behind from the from the local businesses on up to the factories and to the daycares. But I, I, I'm on the, I'm in support if they're going to help out. Financially wise, sure, but if they're not, they just want to put rules and regulations on it, they might have to just take a back seat and let the community uh, take care of the community at some point. Thank, Thank you, you uh, Mr. Bailey. Uh, Mr. Pilot, please. Well, obviously, jobs is one thing that uh, is important in this uh, town. I know that when I moved here 30 years ago and seen all these companies uh, leave, you know, Mantua Company, Miro, you know, the big portion of it, and a lot of other smaller companies. Um, I would hope that the government would uh, allow the, uh, the businesses to do what they need to do to, uh, you know, make the money that they need to, uh, supply the jobs that the, this uh, town needs, and uh, with, with that, uh, you know, the, the economic growth would, would be there. And I think that's, uh, you know, coming back to, you know, one reason why, you know, it's awesome that that ammo company is coming in. Um, that's going to bring, a, you know, it's a nice... Nice company to be bringing in tonight. That's uh, kudos to uh, the Mayor Nichols on that one. But yeah, I, th I think the government needs to stay out of uh, the uh, company's uh, uh, door, if you can say it. Thank you, uh, Mr. Pilot. Mr. Bolt, please. Yes, in regards to what the government should or should not do, I feel that the government should facilitate the fact of bringing these companies in and letting these, whether it be small business, big business, that does not matter. They need to help to get these establishments into Manitowoc to provide good working jobs. And I, from being gone and watching what has become since I've been back, I've seen way too many of our good businesses leave. But once those establishments are in there, I don't care if you're a small business or a big business, we do not need to overregulate them so that they can run their business as they see fit. Thank you, uh, Mr. Bolt. And uh, with that, we'll take a uh, brief break here on our See Here for News debate. Uh, the three candidates vying to uh, serve a two-year term uh, to represent District 7 in the city of Manitowoc. Uh, current Alderman incumbent uh, Aaron Bailey and challengers uh, Scott Pilot and Tim Bolt. You're listening to this special presentation of the See Here for News debates presented by Novak Service Center, Manitowoc. No box service center. Trust us. At Novak Service Center, we're more than your local mechanic. We're a family owned business and we understand the importance of shopping local, supporting those in need, and showing our appreciation. That's why we're offering $10,000 in free oil changes to healthcare workers in our community. In addition, we're also going to offer $5,000 for free oil changes to those in the hospitality industry. So whether you're an essential healthcare worker, or a server, a dishwasher, or even a cook, we want to support you. Simply stop at Novak Service Center and pick up your free oil chain certificate. No questions asked. It's our way of saying thank you. Novak Service Center, Manitowoc. And welcome back to this special presentation of the Sea Haver News Debates on 107.9 WOMT, 97.1 WCUV, WOMTradio.com, and CubRadio.com. I am moderator Brian Norton as we hear from the uh, three candidates that are looking to um, earn your vote this uh, upcoming uh, election season. Uh, these three candidates will be involved in the ballot uh, on the uh, spring primary in just six days. Wow, February 16th. The top two vote-getters advance on to the spring general election on Tuesday, April 6th, and the winner there will then, beginning on April 20th, begin a two-year term to represent District 7 on the Manitowoc Common Council, uh, representing you in that district. And we have uh, more questions, uh, gentlemen, coming into our WOMT Shoreline text line, so uh, here we go, and we will start with Mr. Pilot this time. What is your opinion on combining police and fire departments with the um, option of saving money by perhaps eliminating uh, one set of administrators and uh, combining both? Uh, your thoughts on that, Mr. Pilot? Um, boy, that is kind of a tough question. I guess I never thought about that one, but uh, 
I think that uh, my opinion would probably be to leave it alone um, for a couple reasons. I know, I know I've got a friend and one of my uh, coaches on my staff, and he has three kids. He's a policeman in uh, Green Bay, and uh, he, you know, he tells me how things are you know, in Green Bay. I think uh, that you know, the police, who's an administrator in police and administrator in fire, need to be um, separate because they each have their uh, qualifications in that, that area. Thank you, uh, Mr. Pilot. Mr. Bolt. Well, my first question would be, is it broke? If it's not broke, don't fix it. Like uh, Scott said, I agree with him that the police department has their own separate issues, their own personal situations, disregard, not personal, but their own unfamiliar situations that are not the same as the fire department and vice versa. They have unique situations and equipment and if one person would have all that, we might be overtaxing one of our fine administrators to the point where they can't effectively control both. I'm not saying they can't, but that is a definite job that will probably take at least two different resources. Thank you, uh, Mr. Bolt. Mr. Bailey, please. Um, yeah, that's, that, that is an uh, interesting and a challenging question. But I, I would definitely side on just uh, statistics and studies. First, I would ask the question, um, has it ever been done before? You know, then I want to go into the pros and cons of doing that. And, you know, that's actually called dollars and cents. And, you know, if it makes sense, it can make dollars or save dollars in this case. Um, but if, if I just had to, without any studies or any um, any notes in front of me about that kind of information, I would say leave things as they are. I you know, I want want. I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, no, no. Go ahead. You got time. Okay, cool. Yeah. I, you know, I was just saying, cause like, you know, I don't want um, to impede uh, uh, two things on one uh, one person or one thing just to save a few dollars. So sometimes when you put too much in one room, like having too many cooks in one mm -hmm. kitchen, man, Thanksgiving can really turn bad quick. <laughs> so. Thank you, uh, Mr. Bailey. Uh, gentlemen, we're going to get our final break in because uh, one more question I'd like to get in before we get uh, to our closing statements. As time is really flying by here, and again, thanks to all of you uh, texting in questions uh, for the candidates to respond to on our WOMT Shoreline text line. Uh, we can get to maybe one more, and then closing statements are fast approaching. Um, our WOMT Shoreline text line at 920-6824-674. And uh, back as we put a wrap on today's uh, special presentation of the uh, Seahafer News Debates, the candidates for District 7 to serve a two-year term on the Manitowoc Common Council. The Seahafer News Debates, a special presentation of Novak Service Center in Manitowoc. Novak Service Center. Trust us. Complete comprehensive auto servicing since 1972. We stand behind our work with extended warranties. No box experts will take care of you for peace of mind repair. No box is there. No box service center. Trust that. And welcome back to this uh, special presentation of the Seahaper News Debates. I am moderator Brian Norton as uh, we are getting ready to wrap up our uh, candidate debate today for the uh, three vying to serve a two-year term uh, representing District 7 in the city of Manitowoc. Uh, basically, the district again running north from Vibon over to Hamilton and then from South 14th to South 23rd and then between South 16th and 18th uh, or make that 26th uh, for the few blocks just a little bit north of Division and uh, Lake Michigan, uh, beautiful scenic right on down yonder. And uh, there was a question that uh, was asked of the District 3 candidates, and I, I would like to get your take on this, uh, gentlemen, before we move on. Newly elected candidates, or those who do get elected to office, are required to serve on two committees. What two committees would you like to serve on, and why? And I believe we start with Mr. Bolt this time. Yes, we do. Uh, Mr. Bolt, go ahead, please. Can you, with as far as the committees I would like to go on, I'm not sh completely familiar with all the different committees that the co the 
other person would have to cede, but my first one would definitely be safety. I am on a safety committee with my work. I believe that safety is the key to actually saving money with the, with what is hurt. And I forgot, I did not hear the first part of that question. Just uh, what two committees would you like to serve on and why? Okay. Yeah. The sa the, I, right now, I don't, the safety one is the one I know the most. And as far as uh, if there's a recreational committee to increase the downtown, any one of those I'd be honored to serve on. Thank you, uh, Mr. Bolt. Mr. Bailey. All right, that's great, and um, I'm actually on those committees, uh, but one I would definitely want to get on besides public safety because that's so important in so many ways, and there's a lot of uh, things that go involved from just stop signs to um, doing analysis on speed and uh, improving speeds on roads and decreasing, but uh, another one is finance. I would love to get on finance. Um, you know, it has to make sense. The dollars have to make sense, and we have to stop using the excuse that we don't have enough money. You know, when you get into finance, you can start seeing where the money goes. You can be a little bit more meticulous on where you put that money and, and allocate it in better ways. So I would love to get on finance. Thank you, uh, Mr. Bailey. Mr. Pilot, please. Well, of the four choices, public safety, public infrastructure, personnel, and finance, um, I would have to probably say the uh, public infrastructure and the personnel. Um, I, I just think those would probably be a little bit more for me. Um, you know, I've worked, uh, you know, quite a few different things and different people throughout the years. I think that personnel thing would be good, and I really would like to uh, be part of the uh, infrastructure, you know, the streets and the parking, all that kind of stuff. Either way, though, um, Justin's going to pick who, um, Justin Nichols, our mayor, is going to pick which, uh, if he is still mayor, um, which two I'm on, so. Mm-hmm. Okay, one more here before we get to closing statements. And uh, again, this was asked of District 3 uh, candidates yesterday. I love living in Manitowoc because, and then fill in the blank. Mr. Bailey, you go first. Oh, yeah. Great, thank you. That's a great question. I love living in Manitowoc uh, because of the foundation of Manitowoc, the, the structure of Manitowoc, the history of Manitowoc, um, the 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 Packer game time around Manitowoc, the, the festives around Manitowoc, the, the arts and development that they're doing uh, around Manitowoc. I mean, the, 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 the way that um, the, the elderly community um, tries to involve things and art and stuff in the community, just so many things in the community that I love being a part of. The food, uh, you know, I used to joke with people saying I lost my southern accent at a brat fest, but you know what I'm saying? But I, those, those are some of the things that I really love about the community, and it, it, it is something that I feel like should never change. Thank you, uh, Mr. Bailey. Mr. Pilot? Well, I think one thing I love about Manitowoc, it's, it's the right size. I, I grew up in uh, out, out in the country on a farm, and uh, you know, 15 miles out of the out of the city, and it seemed like it took forever always to get someplace. And uh, you know, I, and I think a big city, anything bigger than Green Bay, would definitely not be for me. And I did live in a for about three years, a smaller town, and that was a little too small for me. I think Manitowoc is the right size, and all the things we have here. I mean, I, I love the the water. I love the river. You know, kayaking. I love the, the the lake. Going out there in a boat or jet ski, um, and I just love the community. You know, some of the the great restaurants and and bars that we uh, have here in town, and and in you know and in the community too. The people. You know, I, I guess like like Mr. Bull here. I, I coached the uh, you know the little league for about four years when my son was in it, and and I've done you know stuff with you know wrestling in the community for a number of years as well. So I think it just, you know, this, it's the right town, right size, and it's uh, perfect for my family, and it has been, so. Thank you, uh, Mr. Pilot. Mr. Bolt. Yes, I have to say the one thing I love about Manitowoc is the people. We have a large group of people that, pardon the expression, everybody knows your name. We're small enough, yet the people knows who you, know who you are, and yet when it comes to raising your child, it takes a whole village to raise just one child. There's enough people out there who know you and can help let you know when your child is out there doing something that maybe they shouldn't. I get that all the time when my kids are growing up. Hey, does this person do this, this person do that? Coaches come up and tell you, 
different things that they see about the kids. The Four Seasons. Manitowoc is such a great place to raise a family because you not only have a beautiful spring, you have a wonderful fall. You always get a taste of the heat for the summer, and unfortunately, we got to bear with the good and the bad with the coldness we have right now. Thank you, uh, Mr. Bolt. Uh, well, gentlemen, boy, this flew by, but we have come to the point now where uh, we open it up uh, for closing statements, and each candidate will get up to 90 seconds uh, to uh, give their closing statements, and we go in inverse order of uh, who uh, went uh, for opening statements, so we will give uh, Mr. Bolt the first opportunity to give his closing statement. You have 90 seconds. Well, first of all, I'd like to say thank you for having me today. I, I grew up on these streets of Manitowoc, the same streets that I wish to serve right now. After a 20-year career in the Air Force, I could think of nothing better than to come back and serve for the community that helped me grow into the person who I am today. I truly care about this city. I am dedicated. I am a hardworking individual who will do nothing more than my utmost best to serve my constituents and see that every voice is listened to and do my best to help them with the outcome that best suits them. I would be honored to represent District 7 and for you the voters, who would you rather have serving you? Someone with a lifelong history and seeing how far we have come and wish to serve you for the years to come. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Mr. Bolt. Mr. Pilot, please. Um, I just want to reiterate the reason why uh, I, I believe this uh, town is, is great and why I want to run for uh, council. I want to ensure the continued progress and growth of this city. Uh, I believe that this community has made an excellent strides in recent years, and I want to be the force that continues to push our city to the next level. One of my goals is to continue to drive the downtown development, um, particularly the Manitowoc River and the River Point District. I uh, love the, the, the lake, as I mentioned before. I think we're so very fortunate to have this uh, as in, you know, on the shores. Um, I believe that the Great Lake is, should be focused. Uh, I like to see our beaches uh, being used by families. Um, I want to see more water, uh, you know, the kayak, water, uh, jet ski launches and things like that. Um, and also, I just want to focus, you know, on my, during my tenure on the council of continuing to attract new companies. Uh, good paying jobs to uh, bring in the uh, young professional and the families that, you know, will help this uh, community grow. And I believe uh, a push to, uh, can you push for this community progress so we'll better position Manitowoc and, and be viewed as beautiful in that gem of the, the lake and uh, like I said before I'm running to make sure we have a uh, stronger representation and as I said before uh, good enough isn't good enough thank you thank you uh, Mr. Pilot Mr. Bailey uh, thank you. I'm I'm actually kind of sad this is ending. I was actually enjoying myself. And gentlemen, I think you all did great. And no matter what the outcome is, I will be happy to reach out to you guys. Or I will help, hope that you will reach out to me with the same uh, tenacity that you have taken today and addressing issues in our community. Um, but in closing, I wanted to say, like, these kind of positions for me... It's normal. My whole life, I, I wanted to try to fit in with everybody, you know, whether what it was or what it wasn't. Um, but being diagnosed with a rare hair condition, I learned early in life that I wasn't made to fit in. I was made to stand out. So with that, I started just embracing my uh, uniqueness and uh, started looking at where can I make a difference and be different and not be the same thing. Um, I don't, I don't want to change the foundation of Manitowoc. I love the foundation of Manitowoc, but I do want to uh, help redevelop the um, the oncoming uh, site of Manitowoc. I want our kids to come back here and build and retire here and raise kids here. I want to have um, I want to have community resources available to people. You know, I, I want to have neighborhood watches again. I want to have things for the community to be depended on and excited about, other than a new building. We need more unity in our community. Thank you, uh, Mr. Bailey. And uh, to all three of you gentlemen, Mr. Bailey, Mr. Pilot, Mr. Bolt, thank you for taking time. I know uh, even a few of you, um, you know, skipping out of work to come here today to uh, hear 
uh, you and uh, your opinions and uh, your great educated answers on things that are concerning people. And uh, we salute you for running for office. Thank you for coming today, and uh, good luck in the primary and down the road.